There are people that like the status quo. There are people that like the condition that we're living in. It gives them power. They get to look out for their friends. Well, the message is we're going to have ethics under John Whitmark. We're going to eliminate conflicts of interest. Let me stand up and say right now, I am my own person. I'll be my own mayor. I will fight for this city. As expected on Election Day, State Senator John Whitmire and Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee dispensed with the rest of the field, with each earning a spot in a head-to-head -head December 9th runoff to be Houston's next mayor. Whitmire was the top vote-getter, drawing nearly 43% of ballots cast, seven points more than Jackson Lee. Battling high negatives, the Congresswoman wasted little time in her bid to close the gap by announcing a high-profile endorsement. She shares my vision on where this city is and where this city should be going. Mayor Sylvester Turner's nod to Jackson Lee was also expected and frankly cuts both ways. Panel, do you think that shared vision will be viewed by runoff voters as more of the same at Houston City Hall? I'm going to throw that question to you, Bill King. You know, I've never think I've never thought that endorsements make a lot of difference. In my race with Sylvester in 2015, he had every uh, previous living mayor endorsed him in that race. The president of the United States endorsed him in that race, and I still came in with a couple of thousand votes of of winning that election. So, I don't think endorsements really make all that much difference in, in these races. This race is really a question of there just not being enough left over uh, for Sheila. Um, between the two of them, they got 78% of the vote, so that's only 22% of the vote. Assuming those people come back, she's got to win two-thirds of those, and the last poll we had said 57% of those people said they would never consider voting for her. So un unless there's some kind of real change in the turnout model, I don't think it's going to be close. Yeah, turnout is the key here because this is going to be on a Saturday in December. Is, uh, is there enough voters out there for Sheila to turn the tide here? Absolutely. Sheila got in the, in the race five months ago. Her competitor got in there over two years ago, and she made the runoff. I remember sitting at this table when people said she didn't have any chance because she was getting in too late. Let me tell you, she absolutely can. In Chicago, the current mayor was 20 points behind. They said the exact same thing. It is no way, and he's the mayor. And as far as endorsements not counting, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. He got all those endorsements, and he became the mayor. I'm just saying. All right, Wayne Dolcefino, you covered many uh, mayoral races in this town. Uh, how, how do you handicap this one? Well, I'm a big fan, as you know, of both Sylvester Turner and Sheila Jackson Lee. <laughs> um, and if you want more of the same, and you like that, like, smelly Pappas Airport deal thing that happened a few months ago, if you like that kind of stuff, then you're going to vote for Sheila Jackson Lee. The only question I have is whether Republicans come back out. Okay, and I think, you know, perhaps they will because Sheila Jackson Lee would be a nightmare in my view for this city. If you like deterioration of our streets and if you like crime, then vote for Sheila. The one thing I'll, other thing I'll say is that I just was really happy to see Whitmire's last commercial be about streets and crime and flight because all we've heard for months from Sheila Jackson Lee is about abortion which the mayor has nothing to do with, and MAGA extremist, like he's somehow like a MAGA extremist. That, for me, as a conservative, is the most tired line there is. It's a, it's a nonsense line. I care about who's going to make my city better. That's it. All right, Chris Tritico, these two finalists have almost a century of public service between them. You've watched it. You've got a front row seat. How do you see this race? So I actually am a big fan of both Sheila Jackson Lee and, and, and Whitmire, uh, really? as opposed to uh, my neighbor here. Um, uh, having worked with um, with Sheila on several cases when she called me and said, I'm going to help you, and she does, and she works very, very hard. And John Whitmire, I've known for a very long time, the office is down the street from me, and uh, so both of them are very, very good public servants, and they work very hard for their districts. And so either one of them, I think, would be good in the job. Um, the problem I think that Sheila has is the numbers, uh, and I don't know that there, she has the time to close the gap here. The poll that, that, that I thought that was the most significant was the negative number of people that said they would never vote for Sheila. 
and I don't know if she has time with a short runoff to close that negative number. And that's, I think, the biggest problem that she has right now. All right, Charles Blaine, you talked to folks on both sides of the aisle, but you have a lot of friends who happen to be uh, more conservative. Will they come out and choose between uh, two folks who've spent their life in the Democratic Party in a nonpartisan race, so to speak? Uh, will they, they see a clear choice here? Well, I think so. I mean, I think it goes to a lot of the sp stuff we spoke about a for the past couple weeks about crime and public safety, but particularly with District G in a runoff, it's going to generate more support for, for I mean, more uh, conservatives coming out. But I'm going to slightly push back against something Wayne said, which is that, you know, a lot of people don't like the way the city's going. The same poll that Bill referenced said that 77% of Democrats are happy with the direction of the city, 6 or 3 percent of black people are happy with the way the city's going. But when, when you look at that, wh where I still have questions is that I don't know how many people Turner's endorsement brings over that aren't already supporting Sheila Jackson Lee. I don't know where yeah. what numbers come from that. I mean, we all assumed he was going to support her anyway, so I don't really see how him, you know, siding with her changes that calculation at all. All right. Mark Jones's polling with the Hobby School sh shows okay. that, look, crime is by far the biggest issue, Bill. Uh, who do you think voters see as a better crime fighter? Whitmire or Sheila Jackson Lee? Uh, I, sir, John has made that the center point of his campaign from the very beginning. Public safety was the thing he talks about every single campaign. He has the long history in the Senate sharing criminal justice. So I think he has the edge on that. But on Charles's point about that poll, that poll is also the first time I've ever seen a poll where a majority of Houstonians said that Houston was headed in the wrong direction. It was 51-49. I've never seen that before in a poll. Okay, we, we got to leave it there. Still